Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here and welcome back to video number five in this mini series of masking tips and tools for ZBrush. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to create masks or custom masks from Polypane and Polygroup. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in the standard UI of ZBrush and let's go ahead and start by enabling the Polypane. Uh, this is from one of the previous videos in this series. So I just wanna enable Polypane and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this entire sculpt with a white color because we're gonna make use of the poly paint as well. Now, I also wanna make sure I only have one poly group. So I'm gonna enable poly frame. So this is a, a Dynamesh, you know, has like 2 million polygons. It's a Dynamesh sketch. So I'm gonna turn off the line as well. And this color that you see here is not from the poly paint, but from the fill of the poly groups, right? So it is a single poly group. So for this next tip, what I wanna do is have multiple uh, poly groups. And the reason, that I wanna show you this is because you might have a character that is a bit more complex than, than this weird looking face. Um, but you know, if you have something with a chest and you know, arms and so, you know, it could be organic or uh, hard surface modeling. It doesn't really matter the nature of the scope that you do. Uh, you're probably gonna have multiple polygroups. So what I wanna show you is a very quick way to generate masks uh, if you don't have polygroups, or in other words, how to quickly generate polygroups from the mask. So in the previous video, I kinda like give you a hint of what, you know, how that would work, which is essentially you hold the control key, mask an area, hold control and W, and that assigns a new polygroup. That's it, right? But in this tip, uh, it's kinda like basically the same thing, but a little bit more thorough in the way that you create those polygroups. So what I like to do is create a, a poly paint, and from that poly paint, I would extract those polygroups and in turn the masking. So let's go ahead and uh, mask by, by cavity, maybe. And this menu that I have here on, the, on this radial menu, we did that in the second video of this series. So I'm gonna um, uh, mask by cavity, and I'm gonna, let's grow that. Let's actually pin that so that we can grow it and sharpen grow, sharpen, grow, grow, maybe blur a little bit, maybe shrink. So I'm just playing with the different settings to create a, a very soft mask, but in certain areas, let's remove that. So now I have this mask, I can also hide it temporarily. And now I can go ahead and select a color. It doesn't matter what color it is. Again, as long as there is enough contrast, that's plenty. So I'm gonna select the, maybe, yeah, a red color, go to color and click on fill object. That would fill, let's turn off the polyframe as well. That would fill everything but the mask cavities that I had, right? So now I can go ahead and invert that and maybe assign a different color, something very different, color, fill object, and that's it, right? So now I have this polypaint that basically is a, is a, is a weird looking polypaint, but I can utilize this polypaint to create mask and in turn uh, polygroups. Right, so for example, I can go to my masking palette. Uh, there are two ways to do it. I'm just gonna show you a, kind of like a recap of something else that I showed you in the first video of the series. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the masking palette. Let's collapse this and click on mask by color. I can click on mask by poly paint and utilize this really cool tool in ZBrush to isolate just one color. So I'm gonna click on this and drag to the red color. Now we can play with the tolerance. That's it, let's click OK. And now I have this mask. Again, we can turn off poly paint, right? And I can go ahead and click Control and W or in the poly, poly groups uh, palette, I can click on group mask. Um, you won't see much difference. Let's go ahead and turn on poly frame, go back to white. Uh, let's go ahead and click on group mask. So now we can clear that mask and we have two polygroups, right? So these are literal polygroups that we can isolate, right? Uh, but this one is really powerful because now you can sort of save this selection uh, in polygroups and then basically <laughs> yeah, just select that polygroup, mask that area, invert that mask. Um, and I'm going a little bit fast here, but you know, you can affect all of those areas and create you know, a, a very weird <laughs> looking creature in this case. But it's in terms of the workflow, uh, it makes it like really, really easy. So that, that's one of the ways that you can go about it. Um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you another way to generate those polygroups. 
and then I'll show you why and how you can use this in a, you know in a way that makes more sense for a proper workflow. Um, okay, so I think we still have the polypane. Turn this off. It went too far. There we go. All right, so I'm going to clear that mask. And now instead of going to the masking palette and clicking on mask my polypane, which allows you to target specific areas, what you can do is go directly to the polygroup sub palette. And if you go down to the bottom, there is this uh, from polypane, right? So this one is really cool because it allows you to automatically create polygroups based on the colors. So you don't have to have two. In fact, you can, you know, let's um, just for the sake of demo, let's use green and create, oops, let's paint actually. So with a standard brush, I'm gonna turn it into a painting brush, enabling RGB and turning off CR. So I can just paint an area like that and maybe use a, another different color, I don't know, for the, for the eyes, for these, uh, the eyelids, right? Um, so you can just paint something that looks very, you know, that looks awful, looks weird with very bright colors, but then you can click on from polypaint. And if I turn on polyframe now, you'll see every single, or the difference between the polypaint is going to be, uh, let's turn off the polypaint now. <laughs> so let's go here, turn that off. Um, you'll see the difference between those polygroups because I use this option from polypaint is gonna become a polygroup. So this one is extremely powerful because you can like literally just paint with color whatever you want to have the you know the polygroups and this becomes super useful in the workflow when you're using masking. So um, just to give you an example, let's say if I were to do this a bit more thoroughly again, uh, I would you know spend more time painting this properly. But I can hold Control and Shift, select that piece, and I can hold Control and mask it, bring back everything invert the mask and now I have this isolated. Now the color between this greenish and yellow are too close uh, so that's why Azurish created like a single polygroup so I can just manually do that. Uh, but you know it's a very easy way to mask an area based on the polygroup. Now if I want to target the kind of let's turn this off actually. Now let's say that I want to start the polypaint process right like texture in this guy. I can go ahead and fill with a yellow color and maybe with a darker red, I can start painting different areas, right? But I want to target the kind of like the cavities that I custom made, like the custom cavities <laughs> uh, in a way. So instead of just bringing my, my tool here for masking and click on cavity, uh, inverting, you know, maybe blurring that a little bit, hiding the mask and then painting, which is going to give me this really nice effect, so it's only targeting the cavity areas, I can go ahead and use the polygroups that I generated so that it, you know, it saves more time. So let's undo that. And because we have this polygroup that we generated from the polypane, uh, we can basically hold control and shift to isolate that piece, hold control to um, mask that area, bring back the rest. So now we have this kind of like custom made mask that we did with the polypane. And of course we can refine it, maybe just bring in our radial menu and maybe shrinking the mask a little bit and the shrinking of the mask will also blur it as it shrinks and that's it we can invert the mask hold control and click on the canvas and hide it just for the time being and with you know, again with a red color like this we can go ahead and start painting and that new that new color is going to be only targeting certain areas so i'm just going to do this very quickly not pressing too hard to add that Right? And again, it's just working on those on those areas uh, thanks to the polypaint and the polygroup and the masking. Right? So those three concepts of polypainting, polygrouping, and masking works really well together. All right. Um, and if I wanted to, I can just go ahead and mask my cavity once more. I can blur the mask, invert and hide, and go with a darker color like this red. So now I can just go ahead and press a little bit harder and you know target this you know, these cavities with a, with a red color, a little bit more intense. Uh, let's clear that mask. So yeah, I mean, it's something that you can use for this type of uh, workflows when you wanna polypaint, you know, a creature or something like that. But it's also a very, uh, very useful way to generate polygroups uh, very quickly. So um, let's go ahead and fill in this with white color. 
just to show you one more thing, because you can start working on, you know, more precise poly painting. So, you know, with a red color, I can go ahead and do this, right? Um, and then just select the adjacent colors just to refine that area. So I would spend some time, if let's say, if I want to refine this creature and I want to move from that dynamish sketch into something, you know, more refined, this is something that I would do. Or one of the techniques that you can use, at least, uh, is to polypaint the areas that you want to have control over it, right? And, you know, we can keep doing this with other colors. Maybe maybe the whole neck is a different color. So I'm just going to do that very quickly. I kind of like define that. And let's just go ahead and paint the rest. But the, the great thing about this workflow is that you're literally just painting. You're not worrying about the masking. Because you could do the same thing with masking. But, you know, with mask, you have to be aware of, you know, if you accidentally, let's say, if you're masking this area and you accidentally click on it once it just blurs the mask, or you accidentally clear the mask or that sort of thing. Whereas with this one, if you made a mistake like this, uh, all you have to do is go back with a white color or, you know, whatever color you have adjacent to this one um, and fix it. So, yeah, let's say that uh, this is something that I'm happy with. And I'm going to go ahead and click on from polypaint. So we're just going to generate polygroups based on the colors. Right. And this is also a very cool and very good way to uh, approach the retopology, right? Because, and, and I'm not going to go into, into that, but you could, once you have this, once you have this difference in polygroups, you can actually go to the geometry palette, go to the serial measure, right? Which is the one that automatically regenerates the topology for a cleaner and simplified version of the mesh. And you can enable these skip groups. And this tool basically will keep the groups or the difference between the groups. And wherever there is a difference between the polygroup, Cirrus will try to generate a an edge loop. So that one is pretty uh, pretty handy, let's say, for the for the eyes or if you want to separate like with a nice loop the head from the neck and, and that sort of thing. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, this requires a little bit more practice, so feel free to watch uh, this video as many times as you need to. And in the next one, I'm going to cover uh, yet another way to mask in Zeros that is really, really powerful for very specific and certain situations that you might find really useful. So I'll see you in the next video.